why robotic surgeries are required. Surgery is really completed on the on the screen. So when a patient comes to you, you consult them straight away for robotic surgeries, or they just walk in. Hey, Dr. Akash, I need a robotic replacement. How is it in your hospital? Hi, I'm Dr. Chandrasekhar, founder and chairman of International Knee and Orthopedic Center, situated in HSR Layout, Bengaluru. Continuing with our podcast series, today I have the pleasure of welcoming my friend from UK, colleague orthopedic surgeon, Dr. Akash Sharma. Akash, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Just giving a brief introduction about Akash. Dr. Akash is an orthopedic surgeon practicing in Birmingham, UK. He is a consultant orthopedic surgeon with keen interest in knee replacement surgery, which spans both in partial and total knee replacement surgery in Royal Orthopedic Hospital, Birmingham. So he has a wide experience of doing both partial and total knee replacement using this robotic procedure. He's one of the key opinion leaders in UK and across the globe for the robotic procedures. He's also the incoming president for the Computer Assisted Orthopedic Surgery Forum in UK. Firstly, thank you so much for your hospitality today. I've really enjoyed two aspects. One is seeing your brand new hospital. I think it's absolutely amazing. Uh, the way you've set it out, the way you've thought about your whole process is formidable. And secondly, the way you operate as well at the same time. Thank you, Akash. Thank you and welcome to this show. So when did you start doing robotic re replacement surgeries, Dr. Akash? Yeah, so uh, probably about 2020. I had an interest in navigation surgery prior to that into my fellowships years. And then yeah, when I came as a consultant, I was like, I really want to take on, you know, further digitally enhance my career in orthopedic surgery. And that's when I want to go ahead and execute fully into robotic surgery. And I bought myself into it. Um, and from then on, I've not, not looked back. I think we started at the same time doing robotic surgery. 2020 March, the COVID struck. And that is where I, I, I got the robot to the to my institution and started. I think we started at the same time. Pretty much. So... It's so amazing to see, Akash, the type of robots you're using. Not many surgeons across the globe will be exposed. Like we are just sitting in the in the war today and then discussing. You have done Mako from Striker, Corey from Swiss and a few, Omnibot, Skywalker. Then you have used, uh, you've also now seen the uh, active robot QVs and MISO. And um, what is your take? Why companies are spending so much of money and doing research on this robot? Do you really see the future for the robots? Look, that's a great question. I think they've learned from navigation surgery. I think navigation surgery came and went. I think this time around, the fact that you can digitize surgery, and, and I think you gave a great example of it today, and, and we spoke about it, which is surgery is really completed on the, on the screen. On the screen. Like, you know, whether or not you capture that data preoperatively with image-based robots, or you capture that data interoperatively, or make those changes dynamically, as we spoke about today. You know, the fact that the surgery for us is now on a screen in a three-dimensional fashion with the fourth dimension, which is now the soft tissue, I think that's where the knee replacement is. Apart from this alignment philosophies, which are easily achievable by robotic surgeries, what, what are the huge patient benefits? In, like alignments are there for the surgeon and also for the patient happiness because they get a good native alignment are a happy feeling of the knee. Apart from that, immediate pain scores, functionality, hospital stay, ICU stay. Do you feel all these things make a huge role in robotic where there is, these are all very advantages in robotic surgeries? Yeah, look, I think you've nailed it on the head. I think that it's, it's multifactorial. The, these whole processes have evolved about, you know, enhancing patients' experience to where we've gone with day case etc. And, you know, modifying our anesthetic techniques as well at the same time. I think the robot is part of that ecosystem, if I'm really honest yeah. with you. Um, I think the fact that we're performing less soft tissue releases because we, we may target alternative alignment techniques. I'm not saying that, you know, we do it in every case and that robot eliminates every soft tissue release. I think it's important to say that we do still perform soft tissue releases in some cases. Yeah. Um, you know, I think the fact that we can do that, I think the fact that we're precise, I think that the fact that we can produce biological surfaces now which mean that we could possibly put uncemented components into these patients and take out you know the worry about fixation with cement i think is a real positive i think this study has been shown now uh with inflammatory markers being reduced because of possibly the soft tissue re yeah. release is low or the haptics from the execution tool is protecting the soft tissue boundaries i think all of these 
play a huge impact. And actually, the most important thing is that the pain control in early days also defines patient outcomes as well long term. And if you can control their symptoms earlier on, they'll do better later on as well. Adding to that point, if you have a good pain control, range of motion is better, recovery is faster, and use of analgesics is less, less admissions with any gastritis or any of the other problems induced with the analgesics. So there's a huge advantage. This cannot be quantified in every case, but as a whole, as a robotic surgeons, we know exactly how a robotic replacement will behave and how a non-robotic surgery will behave. Because it's so many multifactorial cause, uh, factors are in there to quantify. But you and I know that tomorrow, if you have my mother or father going for a replacement, I am definitely going to robot. What about you? A hundred percent. This is the best question. Like, like yeah. what do you do to your parents? If my, my father-in-law is going for surgery and, you know, he's having a robotic. And I made sure I found a colleague who only does robotics. And he's having a partial knee replacement done with robotic technology. So absolutely, I'm recommending it to my own family. So with this, I want to say I, I operated my father-in-law and, <laughs> and did a robotic surgery for him. Yeah. So so nice, nice having you. And then it was fantastic. And this is how the global uh, thing should move because we, we come from two different geographies of the globe. Anatomy is the same. And we learned exchange ideas so much in the war. Honestly, thank you so much. Look, I'm in the presence of orthopedic royalty when I've come here with you. The amount of joint replacements you do is amazing. I think the whole world can learn from your efficiency. There are so many backlogs in government-based, um, you know, hospital, government-based healthcare systems that they need to learn from your efficiency. You, I mean, you're amazing at how many joint replacements you do. I don't know how you do it. Uh, and I don't know how you keep track of it, but obviously the robotic technology makes a difference. Yeah, and also the process and the protocols are in place. I have four wards to start. They have about seven managers to manage. I have about 20 uh, nurses and 18 orthopedic surgeons working for me. Wow. I have about 25 rehabilitation guys who go somewhere and does the physiotherapy to their soup. At the end, I may be the hero or the leader, but my team is the one which makes me feel the fantastic. I would say you're a visionary instead, you know, that you've got everything right. You put the vision straight and you obviously put it in play, put it into practice as well at the same time, you know. And again, I've learned so much. It, not just from our discussions about the whole systems that you've got in place, but also how to, you know, in terms of, we, we, we spoke about it in the car a little bit. We often don't get coaching like these elite superstars, yeah. you know, and sometimes we'd like to see someone operate and you learn things or you revalidate your own techniques. And I think, I think that's probably the most important thing that I've learned today from you, honestly. A lot like two superstars, coaching is difficult, but when two superstars meet, which we are humble and down to earth, we can learn. We can, we can take home points, yeah. both of us. So, Akash, before we wind up, uh, you're a big Virat Kohli fan and you watch IPL. You're, you're a big fan of cricket. I'm a big RCB fan and I love the Indian cricket team. I have a big surprise for you. I have an RCB jersey for you. And we both say in one time. Okay. E, e Salah, Kam, Nandu. Nandu.